welcome to our third video in our series on DNA. In this video, we'll be discussing DNA replication. In our previous videos, we took a look at the history of DNA and DNA structure. It'd be a good idea for you to take a look back at the video on DNA structure prior to watching this video. There are three different hypotheses for the process of DNA replication. The first hypothesis is a conservative model, where the entire original DNA double helix is conserved, and the copy is made of entirely new nucleotides. The second hypothesis is called the semi-conservative model, where each new copy of the DNA is composed of one of the original strands and one new strand built with using the original strand as a template. And the final hypothesis is the dispersive model, where each of the two copies are composed of a mixture of old and new material on each strand. In 1958, Mieselson and Stahl conducted a series of experiments that supported the semi-conservative model of DNA replication. We'll discuss this experiment in more detail during class. So for now, let's give a one-minute review of DNA structure and then get into details of replication. DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is made of repeating units of nucleotides, and each nucleotide is made of a phosphate group, a deoxyribose sugar, and one of four nitrogen bases, giving us adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. These nucleotides are arranged in a double strand resembling a ladder, where the sides or the uprights of the ladder are made of alternating phosphates and sugars, while the rungs of the ladder are made of pairs of complementary nitrogen bases, adenines with thymine, cytosine with guanine, held together by hydrogen bonds. The two strands run anti-parallel to each other, with five prime and three prime ends opposite each other. And the entire molecule is twisted on itself in a shape called a double helix. We know that DNA is the genetic material and that it directs cell activity. Therefore, it's very important that when, we, when the cell divides that it pass along a complete and exact copy of these instructions to the next generation of cells. To ensure that this happens, the new molecules of DNA are made from the old molecules using each strand of the DNA as a template in a process called semi-conservative replication. Let's get started. First we must untwist our double helix so we can see our DNA ladder. Then we start to separate our two strands of the molecule. The enzyme responsible for this untwisting and unwinding is called helicase. So let's watch that again with helicase in action. The helicase unzip the DNA molecule, breaking hydrogen bonds that hold the two sides together. As we continue to unzip the molecule, we uh, create these areas of exposed nucleotides that we call replication forks. Now these pairs of complementary bases have an affinity for each other. So if allowed to, uh, this molecule kind of zip back up this, or, or re-anneal, and so we don't want that to happen. So to prevent these bases from coming back together, uh, proteins called single strand binding proteins or SSBs bind to each single strand holding it apart. So to summarize, to begin replication uh, the helicases will unwind and unzip the, the DNA ladder breaking hydrogen bonds and the single strand proteins will bind to the single strands holding this uh, replication fork open. Now it's time to begin building the new strands of nucleotides. So we bring in and line up complementary bases and then the next, and then we build the bonds between them. This process is catalyzed by an enzyme called DNA polymerase. We're building a polymer, a molecule made of repeating units, so we're polymerizing and we're building a polymer of DNA. So the enzyme's name is DNA polymerase. So let's look at that again with DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase lines up the, the nucleotides and then we can build a bond between the two. Usually when we build bonds, requires the input of energy, and this reaction is no exception. What's interesting is that each nucleotide is bringing its own little packet of energy. In an earlier video, we learned about ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, the cell's energy currency. Well, ATP is a nucleotide, and these nucleotides, adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, can carry energy in the same way. The nucleotides come in as triphosphates, and DNA polymerase helps remove two of these phosphate groups and in doing so releases energy and that energy is used to help build this bond. Let's continue to build the strand. 
will bring in the next nucleotide, use its energy to build the bond, and the next, build the bond. And you can see that we're building in the 5' prime or phosphate, the 3' prime sugar direction. In fact, this is the only way we're allowed to build DNA strands. DNA polymerase can only add nucleotides to the 3' prime end of a growing DNA strand. So we continue to follow the unzipping and build continuously on this side of the DNA. We call this strand that we're building the leading strand. But what about on this side? On this side we can't build down following the zipper. Let's take a look at this side. On this side we're going to have to build uh, in the up direction from the 5 prime to the 3 prime. So you'll see we'll have to build upwards on this side. Now as I show the animation of this uh, other side I'm not going to use the DNA polymerase and I'm not going to show the, the tri -nu triphosphate nucleotides uh, just because it takes a long time to animate uh, but just remember that it happens. So we bring in our complementary bases on the uh, discontinuous build side on this side building in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. We'll bring them in and build the bonds and you can see that we are moving uh, from 5 prime to 3 prime. So to continue building we'd have to unzip the molecule some more, drop down below and build up again. Uh, we call this a discontinuous build. And so we build in fragments and we call this the lagging side or the lagging strand. Let's draw this a little differently so we can see better what will happen. So on this side since this is our 5 prime end we can have a continuous build as we follow this molecule kind of unzipping uh, continuous build from the 5 prime to the 3 prime end. We, again we call that the leading strand. But on this side we would unzip, build this direction, unzip some more, build up again, unzip some more, and build up again. So it's a discontinuous build each time building from 5 prime to 3 prime, 5 prime to 3 prime and we have these fragments uh, of these sections and we call these fragments uh, Okazaki fragments. You can also see that there are gaps between these fragments that we need to fill here and here. The enzyme that ties the Okazaki fragments together is called DNA ligase. To ligate means to tie together and that's what these enzymes do. They fill in these gaps between the Okazaki fragments uh, attaching the sugar to phosphate backbone into a continuous strand. Now there's one more thing we need to know about, all, about this process. It turns out that it doesn't work quite like I've shown you. DNA polymerase cannot start building a strand from scratch. We couldn't just start bringing in these uh, complementary nucleotides and then uh, putting them together like this. Uh, it turns out that DNA polymerase can only attach a nucleotide to a pre-existing strand. So what we have to do is employ a different enzyme, some RNA polymerases that build an RNA primer, a short strand of RNA bases, and then DNA polymerase can build off of this strand, attaching uh, the sugar of one to the phosphate of the next uh, to build this strand attached to a pre-existing strand, and then uh, we could continue from there building. And then later, an enzyme would come back in behind and remove this primer one nucleotide at a time and replace it with the complementary uh, DNA bases that uh, would be appropriate. We're going to talk a lot more about RNA in a later video. So a quick recap will again highlight the semi-conservative nature of this process. We start with our original ladder. We separate the strands, bring in complementary nucleotides which I've drawn in, in red here. As we continue the process we can see that instead of building a whole new DNA molecule, we're actually conserving half of the original molecule and building only a second new half. So that each strand is half old material, the black, and half new material. This ensures the conservation of the code. Because we're building off an exi existing template and because we know that we have a very rigid pairing requirement, the every thymine has to have an adenine, every cytosine has to have a guanine, uh, we get two molecules that are identical to each other in DNA code and they're also identical to the original ladder that we had. Using half of the parental strands to guide the construction of the new side and following our rules of base pairing 
ensures the accuracy of the code, except when it doesn't. And what happens when there's an incorrect base pairing? It turns out that after replication is complete, there's a proofreading step where enzymes check each base pairing to make sure that they're complementary. If they find a mistake, like we see here, the enzymes will cut out and replace one of these nucleotides in order to make this, this rung of the ladder a complementary base pair. However, there's two ways to correct this mistake. I could take this T out and replace it with a G, or I could take the C out and replace it with an A. And Think about what the difference is. The, uh, in this case, the way I've drawn it, the thiamine is from the original strand, so that if I cut out the C and, uh, let's see, here it is, replace it with this uh, A, this adenine, then I'm restoring my original code. But, if I were to leave the C, I could still fix the base pairing problem by taking out this thymine and replacing it with a guanine. Now I have a complementary pairing in here, but I've actually changed my code. This would create a new and slightly different version of this piece of DNA, and that's the source of mutations. And we know that mutation kind of have a, the word mutation has a, a negative connotation, but all good traits that evolve and come about came about through the same mutations that bring about uh, kind of deleterious or bad mutations. Now, one last time through the process to make sure we have it. Helicases unwind and unzip the double helix, exposing a region of nucleotides in a replication fork. The single strand binding proteins bind to these single strands, holding them apart so that we can begin uh, to bring in our complementary nucleotides. Building off primers, DNA polymerase will bring in and help bind together complementary nucleotides using the triphosphates and break, uh, breaking off the triphosphates to release energy to build the bonds. On one side, the build is continuous as we go from the five prime towards three prime side, or the five prime towards three prime end, of this new nucleotide strand. However, on the opposing side, we have to build in the opposite direction, building up. So we unzip and build upwards, and then unzip some more and build up again, creating what we call Okazaki fragments. We said the enzyme that helps us put together the Okazaki fragments are called DNA ligase. So we have our leading strand that's built continuously following the zipper down, and our discontinuous strand creating our Okazaki fragments on the lagging strand. We mentioned that DNA polymerase can only build a DNA strand off of an existing strand, so we talked about the importance of RNA primers to the process. We made sure we understood the semi-conservative nature of replication, and we talked about what happens when there's a mistake in our DNA code, in our base pairing with DNA repair. That concludes the lesson on DNA replication. Make sure you bring any questions you have into class or ask them in the comment section down below. Uh, check back soon for the next video in this series.